both the House and Senate versions of the National Defense Authorization Act would eliminate the chief management officer role at the Pentagon. A new analysis of the bills from the Heritage Foundation advocates for keeping the CMO role. Fred Bartels is a senior policy analyst at the Heritage Foundation. Thanks for being here, Fred. What do you think are the biggest issues Congress still needs to decide on in this legislation? My pleasure. Uh, the issue that you mentioned at the top of the chief management officer, the, the main debate is why are they actually decide both? Chambers have decided on terminating the position, but the question is what is next and what are they trying to do effectively? Uh, our analysis shows that there has not been enough time with sufficient authority for the position to, ex to execute or not execute. It, it's too early to pass judgment on that. Uh, further beyond that, you have the Indo Pacific, there is the that both chambers have a version of it, but they still need to decide every day details. Uh, further, there are a lot of issues on nuclear modernization that the House took a, a fairly different approach, uh, especially prohibiting any uh, possibility of testing in the future or, or, or preparing for possible tests, and even if there's an actual need. So those three, I think, are on top of the line and ought to be high. Just to go back to the CMO, CMO one for a second, what mm -hmm. do you think the benefits are? Um, do you think if we were to keep it for longer, then DOD would, would have a better sense of whether it's working and Congress might have a better sense of whether it's working? My main issue there is now that you're tossing the baby with the bath water. Uh, the position was created as it ends in the NDAA of 2017. Uh, the current holder of the position was only confirmed by the Senate in December of 2019. So even if the person holding the office was the ideal position, if they have set up the proper authorities for the whole year, there's still not a time for them to be able to execute any substantial change in any substantial business reform, especially because the DOD operates on very long budget cycles. So they are, you, you need to consider at least like two years for someone actually to affect change on the budget cycle, and you, and you see that reflected on the budget request. Right. With with both um, chambers calling for this to be eliminated, do you think there's any hope at this point to, to keep it? I think so. Uh, there is a movement both on the, on the Senate and the House of some lawmakers that don't disagree with terminating the position yet. And the bigger player that has not spoken in public yet is Secretary Asper and Deputy Secretary West. Uh, it would be important to see an assessment from them, to, see, to hear from them how they understand that position. I imagine that they have spoken to lawmakers, but that those discussions have not come out to the public. Right. What, what recommendations did your analysis have for Navy shipbuilding? Yeah. So the, the main question on the Navy shipbuilding process is that you, we haven't seen yet a new long-term plan. And right now, the there are some provisions in, in the House that would overburden the unmanned uh, per, I mean, past that they're developing in the Navy. And I think that that kind of hampers the evolution of the process. Uh, the important thing is how you're going to treat uh, the submarine. Uh, the House has a request for a second uh, Columbia class, which the Senate does not. And part of that difference is how they keep your capability. And that's something that my colleague, Peter Heritage, has studied and has seen it. And there are actually capability problems on how to optimize the yards in the long run. Sure. Well, do you see any barriers to this conference bill? What do you think the odds are that these um, their differences can be reconciled rel relatively quickly? So the odds were better than they were last year when the House adopted a highly partisan bill that did not count with any Republican vote from the start. So it, you have a better starting point, but you have, on the other hand, you have the problem of the presidential election that is over. There's cast a big shadow over all the political discussions in Congress nowadays, and expect that you'd see that push forward the, the whole calendar. So it, there are big issues, but none of them should, should stop the bill on the tracks. Uh, especially if the House is willing to reach bipartisan solutions. You note, though, that, of course, the timing of the, the election, and, and there certainly is a lot going on. Do you still feel optimistic that we're going to get a, a bill on time? 
uh, depends on what you think of it sometimes. I, I don't think much is going to get done before the end of the fiscal year. But you never know if the leadership in, in Congress and the Senate want to bring up a past NDA as something for them to discuss on the campaign trails, that could change. But uh, honestly, right now, if I was a betting man, I would bet after. Thanks so much for Which being here. Good. Oh, my pleasure.